Today I want to talk to you guys about how the content that you choose to watch can have a very strong effect on your mood, the way that you perceive the world and your life in general. Now to some people this might sound like a very extreme statement but I know that there's going to be people watching that are going to be like yeah, this is legit. I have always believed in this concept. I don't even like to call it a concept really because I believe this to be the truth. But that being said, I have not always followed what I preach. There's still been many, many films and TV shows that I've watched knowing this information. What I wanna share today is a recent experience that really, really stood out to me and just showed me how powerful film and television is when it comes to your state of mind. So so let's get into it. I have written down some notes because I have a tendency to go on a tangent. So I was going through a phase recently where I just couldn't find anything that I wanted to watch on YouTube. I was scrolling through Netflix and I was like, oh God, this all just looks like trash. <laughs> I really wanted to find a series that I could just get really stuck into, something that people have talked about a lot, something that's really popular. You know when you binge watch a series and it just gives you that dopamine hit? like. Like, that was what I was looking for and boy <laughs> did I find it? I decided to watch a series which you've probably heard of before called 13 Reasons Why. I know what you're gonna say. Yolanda, this series is old. Like, like how late do I have to be on the train? I'll tell you why I chose not to watch it in the first place was because my friend years ago had said to me, oh, have you watched 13 Reasons Why? And I was like, yeah. And I knew what the subject matter was about this program. And she said to me, oh my God, like it's so so sad like the ending just made me cry and at that time I was like I don't want to watch that. It's a subject that is really, really close to home for me. If people know about my history and stuff, I'll just tell you. For anyone who's like a subscriber, you probably know that I suffered a lot of bullying in school. Really, really bad. To the point where I dropped out at the age of 14. Bullying has always been a real sore point for me. Like out of all the things that I get pissed off about, <laughs> I hate bullying. And I know that most of you guys who are watching have probably heard of this series before but for anyone who hasn't let me just give you a brief synopsis. So 13 Reasons Why is about a girl that is bullied really really badly to the point where she chooses to end her life. It's called 13 Reasons Why because before she ended her life she decided to record a series of tapes explaining her story and explaining all of the people that played a part in her ending her life. I keep using that term because I know that if I use the S word I'm gonna get like censored or something so forgive. Anyway so all of the people that played a part, all of the bullies and all of the people that mistreated her ended up receiving the tapes. The series covers so many dark subject matters. The series in general is very very triggering and the purpose of this series supposedly is to raise awareness but I'm about to come in with a very unpopular opinion here. When people talk about raising awareness what they want to do is raise awareness to the people who are causing upset to others. And this covers a range of different issues that we have in the world right now. But the reality is that the people who are watching this show mainly are people that have empathy, people who have suffered bullying, people who have had depression and suffered forms of abuse. The people who choose to watch this type of content, series, film, etc, they're watching it because they resonate with it and because it's already a sore point for them. I personally don't believe that a bully would want to watch this show. Someone who bullies another person does not necessarily have the most empathy. And the same goes for any other issue across the board. It's not the perpetrators that decide to watch this, it's the victims. And I personally believe that it is actually very damaging. You know, it's like you've got a cut and it's healing and then suddenly someone just rips the scab off. <laughs> 
Sorry for being gross, but that's what it feels like. So anyway, me saying all of this, I bet you're watching and you're thinking, well, why did you choose to watch it if you know that it's gonna trigger you? I am human, just like the rest of us. It is in our human nature to be drawn towards things that include conflict, danger. It's part of our animal instinct. And the people who make content, who make films, series, they know this and they use it to their advantage. Even I, as a content creator, I know that this is what works, unfortunately. I know that more people are gonna click on a video if I've got a shocked face, or if there's some kind of scandal. When I do a haul video, I always know that there's gonna be more clicks if it seems like I'm gonna be trashing the brand or something. And unfortunately, stuff that's positive and mellow just doesn't really seem to get that much attention. So anyway, I started watching the series and literally Literally from episode one, I was absolutely hooked. And it got to the stage where I thought to myself, this is getting a little bit out of hand because I was staying up until three o'clock in the morning watching this, <laughs> desperate to find out what the next tape was gonna be. You know, I've got to hand it to the series. They really keep you on a carrot and a stick. Every single episode was cliffhanger after cliffhanger. It's very hard not to get addicted to this series, especially if you relate to the girl in that series. So I stayed up until 3 a.m. the first night. I watched about five episodes. I went to sleep and I started getting nightmares. These nightmares were about all of my deep-seated fears. And the weird thing was every single nightmare that I had included characters from this series. But did I stop watching it? No. I carried on. I thought to myself, okay, I'm hooked now. There's no going back. I just need to get through the rest of the series. I thought there was only one season. I'll just get it out of my system. I'll watch it and then I will not watch anything like that again. The day after those first nightmares occurred, I did feel like there was a lingering darkness around me. You know, I was feeling pretty good before I started watching the series, but it had definitely had an effect on my mood, like a detrimental effect. So the second night I watched, tons more episodes. I got through season one within about three days. As the days progressed, my mood got worse and worse and worse. I found myself reminiscing about all the trauma that I've been through. I found myself worrying about everything. I was worrying about life. I was moody. And then I discovered that there is three more seasons of this. It was like I wanted a resolve. I wanted the girl to get justice. But the more episodes that I I watched, the more I felt like it was teaching me how to be helpless and just reminding me of how unfair the world can be. And I'm not being funny. I don't really need reminding of that. I'm very aware of it. The final straw was when I had a body dysmorphic episode when I was at home. There's no need for me to go into the details of it, but it was bad. I'd managed to go from being in such a good place mentally to literally spiraling down very quickly. And that was when I finally decided, right, I'm gonna stop watching this. And it took a few days. It actually took a few days for me to recover from this deep, dark conditioning that I felt like I was going under. And simultaneously, my dopamine hit had just been taken from me. I had nothing to watch. Nothing was interesting me. Is that even a term? I'm gonna use it anyway. <laughs> I'd just gone back to the same place where I was like, right, okay. There's nothing to watch anymore. So then I thought to myself, okay, I wanna introduce some positive things into my mind. And I started watching this series called Below Deck. I suppose you could say that it's reality TV, but it's not got a huge amount of drama. There's no huge, huge conflict like you'd see with Love Island or something like that. <laughs> Below Deck is about a bunch of people who are working on a yacht. It's high energy, good energy. It's sunny, they've got the sea around them and they love what they do do. It's not something where you watch it and you're absolutely hooked and you know what? That's okay. In fact, I prefer it that way. I don't think that bingeable content is necessarily the healthiest. If you find that something is that gripping that you want to stay up until 4am, it's gonna have some kind of detrimental effect. And... <laughs> 
I feel really stupid for saying this because I do YouTube. I want to make content that people want to binge, but not to the detriment of their own psyche. <laughs> That's why I'm hoping this video isn't going to come across dark and dingy. I still want to give like an uplifting vibe, you know? I just want to spread some knowledge and just share an individual experience that nobody else has shared on YouTube. <laughs> not that I know of anyway. And the thing is as well, different type of content is going to affect people differently. For example, I used to love, love horror films. I love thrillers. I like films that make you think. I like films that have got a psychological deeper meaning and I also love things of the supernatural. But I think ultimately what I'm saying is just pay attention to the way that it makes you feel after you've watched it. Just be aware. If you find that something that you're watching is putting you in a dark place, that's when you know that there's some kind of conditioning going on. I'm not gonna say that I'm perfect and that I'm gonna stop watching negative content altogether. I believe in balance. But I guess what the purpose is with this video is to just share a new perspective. Oh, <laughs> and another thing. I can't believe that I nearly forgot to mention this. This is a thing that I haven't seen anybody else talk about, right? Have you ever heard the term Black Mirror? Not the series Black Mirror, even though that is quite relevant. But if you know about witchcraft or sorcery and stuff, you'll probably be familiar with the idea that some witches have a black mirror, like in Snow White. The witch in Snow White does this thing called scrying, which is when she talks into the black mirror and the black mirror shows you into the future. It's very powerful. There is a spiritual annotation involved with this. But what's the one thing that we all carry around with us? Yeah. <laughs> We have black mirrors all in our houses. Your television, your iPad, your phone. And I'm just gonna dive really deep into this, right? Because my mind is open to so many different possibilities. I feel like there's something there. Almost like what you consume the most of starts to come into your life. Just food for thought, <laughs> I guess. Um, I've been talking for a really long time. I think I've made my point. I think I've shared a decent story with you guys, hopefully. Um, comment down below what your thoughts are. I wanna start up a conversation about this and see if anybody else has got a similar experience to me. And also, if you like this video, <laughs> please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Love you, bye.